What's going on guys? Greg here. I have a uh, part one of a three-part video series that I'm going to be doing for you guys, showing you how to install sound fonts onto any Plector Labs board. Uh, today is going to be the Nano Biscotti V4, and this is going to be strictly for Mac users. Uh, there aren't really any videos out there showing people how to install sound fonts on a Mac, and so I figured I would, I would get this out there and hopefully this helps you guys. I'm going to run through how to install sound fonts, what you're going to need to do it, and uh, and how to mess with a couple of the settings. Uh, nothing crazy, but just so you guys can get started on this, because like I said, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's pretty easy to do. So let's get started. The uh, first thing you're going to need to do this is a way to read your micro SD card. So you can go to Amazon, Walmart, anything like that, and something like this where it's a micro SD to USB reader. So. There you go, there's your micro SD slot right there, as you can see, and then obviously this cap pops off and you can uh, plug it into your computer and you're, it'll start to, it'll show up on your computer. So, once you get your SD card and you plug it into the reader and then you plug it into your computer, it will appear something like this for Mac users over on the left-hand side, somewhere in here, and it'll read whatever board you have. And like I said, today's gonna be the Nano Biscotti V4. And so basically, you're going to want to try and edit all these different files in here, get new sounds, etc., etc. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to create, and I did all this beforehand so it's easier for you guys to see. So, we're going to have, these are all my sound fonts for different people and some of their, and their, uh, their estimates, etc., etc. And so I have a spare folder for the testing that I'm going to show you guys today. So you just want a folder for your sound fonts. And then you want to create two folders inside of it. You want your original files and your edited files. And the reason you do this is because if something goes wrong in what you edit, you always have your spare original files that you can also download from plectorlabs.com. Uh, but I always keep an original uh, file on hand. So you go into your, your board that is plugged in. You just want to highlight all of them and then copy. And then go into your original files and paste. And then you're going to do the exact same thing into your edited files and paste. Okay, so now you're going to leave the original as they are and you're only going to mess with the edited, obviously. So we can go in here and we can get rid of this right here. We can just close. Okay. Now you are going to want to choose what bank you want to mess with. I'm only going to mess with bank one in this saber. Uh, so what you can do, go into bank one, and all these are the original files. So this is uh, light meat, I believe. And then these are all your original files, your swings, your clashes, your power on, power off. Uh, you want to highlight everything. So for Mac users, it's command A, except for the config file. And you want to just drag and drop into the trash. There you go. And I personally like to bring the config file up the top and, and make it look pretty so that you can get to this right away. Now, you are in here, this is your edited files, and you have a bank that is empty and ready for a new sound font. So you can go in to, I have all my sound fonts that I have downloaded, and you can get your sound fonts from right here, from saberfont.com, uh, www.saberfont.com, and then you can go in here and it's all the sound fonts you could possibly want. Search, I'm gonna look up K-Sith, because I do it, oh, sorry, um, Saber Fonts by Artist. And then I'm gonna scroll down, scroll down, K-Sith, okay? And you can go in, and you can see all of his sound fonts, and for the most part, I think he has Plector Labs, but you wanna make sure that you get the sound font that is for your board. So you can see right here, this little green, that's right above, is for Plector Labs, and then over here, this is Nigon. And so, you want to choose any font that you want, so let's say, go with Desolation. This is Desolation, click. Uh, Plector Labs Optimize, you can download, and then you'll get a file on your computer that'll be in your downloads. And once you do, you can put it wherever you want to put it, these are all my fonts. And so, right here, I have Desolation. Um, I had his original file, so I named it Desolation too, but this is just Desolation. And these are what you would get with the file. And what's nice about Plector Labs boards is you don't have to pick and choose 
what you put in. You can actually just control all, select them all, and then I'm gonna copy all of these and paste them in here. And the reason that's nice, and this where I pasted them was back in your bank one. And the reason this is nice is because depending on what board or what saber you put this in, what board you put it in, only the sound fonts that you can actually use will play. So Nano Biscottis only allow one boot file. And so this will only play whatever the first boot is. And all these files we named correctly beforehand. Um, and like I said, if you like boot two instead of boot one, you can just change this name to boot two and this name to boot. And then this one will play in place. Um, and like I said, you have all your swings, all your clashes, your power on, your power off, lock up, force, everything. So like I said, depending on what board you use, these will all play as you need to. I'm going to minimize this because I don't need my sound font anymore. And now, this bank one is going to be Desolation by Kaseth. Bank 2 and Bank 3 will be the original files, Grey Meat and Dark Meat respectively. And now a quick look at what you can do with the config file, which is in each bank. So this is bank specific, and you can configure different things for the Nano Biscotti V4. Um, you can adjust your colors, which is the drive and the flash drive, or flash on clash drive, however you want to explain it, uh, where this is 1, 2, and 3 and you can choose your colors accordingly on a scale of 0 to 1023. Uh, you can read the manual for more details on that because you have to have a power extender to use all of them and you know that's a whole lot of stuff I'm not gonna get into. Um, and then a lot of things that I use, I don't use most of these, but one thing that's nice is this resume file, which if it's set to one, the, like this, the hum will actually continue from where it left off rather than restarting. And then the other things that are kind of nice is FLKS and FLKD, and the same for Pulse D and Pulse L. These control the flickers and the pulse on your saber. Um, so these are just some things to mess around with. You can read the manual and see what each one of these does, and it's simply you just have to change whatever number you know you want to change it to according to what the the manual allows. So I'm going to exit out. I'm not going to save it. And then before we put this on the saber, the last thing to look at for a V4 is the override file. Now this override file controls things that apply to all your sounds, doesn't matter what bank they're in. So things like the volume of the saber, the beep when you go to the menu, mute on the go, mute off, you know, your, your sensitivity settings, um, how repeatable your sounds are. So this is, you know, 200 milliseconds before another swing can be triggered and so on. Um, so these will apply to everything, whereas the config file that I showed you beforehand will only apply to that bank. So if I wanted to turn my saber down, I could change this to a 2, and then I can save it, and exit. And then that would be good to go. So now I have some edited files for Nando Biscotti V4, and the only thing we have to do is put them back on the saber. However, you cannot do that just by dragging and dropping. What you have to do is format your SD card, which basically means you have to erase it the proper way so that it's ready for new files. And for Mac users, this is where a lot of people get confused. And all you have to do is go up here and type in disk utility. And I have it in my dock, but this is a disk utility. Go to that. Oops. Let me just go here. But you go to the disk utility. Boom. And this will pull up. And what this shows is this is your normal storage, which you don't want to touch. And this is your external hard drive. This is your micro USB to USD, or USB, excuse me. And this is your Nano Biscotti. This is the uh, micro SD card. So you click on the micro SD card, which I have already formatted it, but I'm going to do it again. So you click here, you click erase. You can change the name if you want to. I'm going to leave it as V4 because that's what it is. And then you want to click the format and you want to make it ms. Dot, which is Microsoft format, basically. Oops. So yeah, ms.fat and then erase. So do this, erase that again. And now if you look, I'm in my edited files, but if you look at the Nanobiscotti V4, it is completely empty, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to highlight 
all my files. I'm going to copy them. You don't want to drag and drop. You want to copy and paste. So copy, go back here, paste. And depending on the size of the, the files, it might take longer. And now you are good to go. You would just eject, and this will be ready to put back in your saver. Uh, one quick note is that you cannot go into here and then start editing stuff here. Every time you change things, you have to reformat and redo all the steps I just showed you. Uh, this video is long, but it's actually a very easy process. It's just a matter of getting used to doing it because that is how your saver will work correctly every time. Technically speaking, you can edit the text file. You don't want to touch either of these, but you can edit the text files without formatting, but I choose not to because I think it's just bad practice. I would rather reformat after every change I make. Um, and the same thing, where you go back to your edited files, make some more changes, and then copy, paste after reformatting, and that'll be it. So then you can go in, this is my edited bank, and then all you have to do is click eject, and you guys are good to go. So that is something that you can now plug back into your Nano Biscotti V4, and you'll be good to go to, to listen to your new sound font. Um, I hope this was useful. I hope you guys learned something and keep an eye out because I'm going to be doing two more videos for the Prism V5.1 and the Crystal Focus 8, which are extremely similar processes, but because of the fact that there's more, I want to show and mention some more things that you can do with each board. So thank you guys, and I will talk to you later.